Tweety. I'm Tweety. Call me Tweety Bird. What the heck are you doing? Oh. I'm Tweety! <laughs> Stop. What are you doing? I brought Tweety Bird. Why do you have Tweety Bird? Oh. I thought I'd bring him here to the table for a visit. That's my Tweety. I know it's your Tweety. <laughs> <laughs> Today, we are doing a subscriber-inspired video from Lynn... Lynn Billadoo. Billadoo. Thank you. Billadoo. I know. And she wrote... Would you consider doing a follow-up video to your art collection one? I have a million questions such as, how do you get it home safely? Mm. How do you choose what to buy? Ah. Is it a good value? Mm. Mm. What about galleries in the port? Oh. Do they have anything in the lower price ranges? And uh, mm. she says that she's a amateur painter <gasps> And is thinking about bringing her small watercolor set oh, with her awesome on her idea. next cruise, and uh, and she wants to know if people would think that she's nuts if she painted <laughs> in a public space. Nah. So yeah. today I'm cruising with wheels. Frank and myself are going to answer all these questions <laughs> and explain the art auction process. Let's get started. Now, for the purposes of this video, we're going to be talking about Park West Galleries because they're the predominant uh, company uh, that does all the art auctions on the cruise ships, as well as they have, you know, lots of places here on land. Mm -hmm. So, tell and us. We've, we've bought art at other places, oh, yeah. too, uh, on the islands. Um, but that would be handled at a store or a gallery. Uh, so you're going to have to research that on your own. Right. Or a local artist, because yeah. we've got some great art from a local artist in Puerto Rico. Yes. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about Park West. Well, Park West was founded in 1969, and it's based uh, outside of Detroit. And they're actually the world's biggest gallery. Mm. Uh, it's uh, about... Third, um, excuse me, 63,000 square feet, Ooh, wow. uh, their Detroit location. And it was founded by um, Albert Scaglioni, sure. I think that's his name. Nice Italian. Uh, yeah. <laughs> they sell pictures and sculptures and thousands of live auctions are held on more than 100 ships each year. Right. And most of the cruise lines um, have Park West our auctions on the ship. Right. Now, all of you know that we've, our favorite cruise line is uh, Norwegian. We make no qualms about it. But we've also traveled on uh, Carnival and um, purchased some art, right? right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, Royal, Royal Caribbean. Caribbean. Celebrity, Costa, MSC. They, Princess. Princess, Holland America. Right. Um, they're pretty much predominantly yeah. the um, the art auction house for the cruise lines. But they do have galleries uh, located on land. They sure do all over the United States. And once you get hooked up with them and you uh, give them your email address and your home address, they send us stuff. Oh, yeah. Um, I actually got an email today. They're oh. having a sale on Thomas Kincaid things. <laughs> uh, they want more of our money. I know. <laughs> well, speaking of money, Park West um, has annual sales of over $400 million. Wow. And uh, they have more than 2 million customers. That's a lot of money. That is. That's a lot of art. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of art. I don't think it would fit in our house. Well, every time we go on a cruise, my mother gets all nervous. I know. She, last, the last cruise, we didn't buy any though. No, we didn't. Because <laughs> there's just there's no more wall space in the new house. Well, we could we <laughs> could do like some of our friends do. Oh, they would right. They <laughs> have friends. They rotate. They just rotate their artwork in and out of certain rooms, and you and know, some goes in storage right. and. And they're like, oh, we're going to put this up and take this down. And I don't want I, my house to become a gallery. And I don't have the energy for that. Oh, who does? So, um, you know, when you, when you board the ship, um, 
you'll, you're going to see the art gallery set up. Mm -hmm. And they're going to have every, you know, a lot of stuff out. And you're going to be able to walk through uh, the cruise ship gallery and uh, talk to the reps there from Park West. And they are from Park West. They're not part of uh, whatever cruise yes, line. Yes, they're not crew members. Right. They're not part of the ship. No. They're an independent company. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the cruise line does get a small cost oh, of, <laughs> sure of the do. art. Or I'd be get out. Um, but yeah. Yeah. So, and we've met a, a, a lot of nice reps uh, on board. Uh, they sit you down. Uh, we have a history, obviously, uh, with the artwork we've purchased, and they're able to get on their computer and pop our name and see exactly from year to year to year, from cruise to cruise to cruise, all the artwork that we have purchased. Right. Now, when you get to your cabin, uh, you're going to find uh, the ship's newsletter probably on your bed. Yes, and... Like we always say, read that yes. newsletter. Yes. In that newsletter, it will have all the times and locations of where the art auctions right. will be happening. Exactly. Now, when we spoke to, um, they'll have a, a gallery on the ship. Mm -hmm. Some of the ships, I'm just thinking, like the Carnival Conquest we were on, they had a gallery, but they also had it all throughout the ship. Oh, yes. It, it, the artwork is uh, all adorning the walls. Displayed. Exactly, where you're going up and down the stairs, outside of the restaurants, so it's everywhere. So it will depend on the cruise line that you're on as to how they will display it. Mm -hmm. uh, Norwegian doesn't do that. Norwegian only has it in the art gallery. But we've been on Carnival right. and they've had it throughout the mm -hmm. ship and as well as Royal right. has had it throughout the ship. So you're reading the newsletter and you can see the listing. Uh, where the art auction is going to be held, and there's various uh, amount of events. Now, yes. typically, uh, let's say for example on a seven day cruise, they'll probably have three art auction events. Well, three major ones. Right, three major ones. The, obviously the initial one. That's like, uh, you know, welcome to Park West, Right. come in, get your bidding number and sign right. everything up, and right. and then they have the, uh, the big, big um, they usually have one at sea. That's a big well, the one. the big finale. Yeah, it's the big the, finale. Yeah, the last sea day when you're kind of on your way home and they're thinking, oh, we have got to get some of this stuff purchased. So, yeah, that's usually the last one. Now, you know what's a nice thing with these? What? Auctions. Well, well yeah. you get a free champagne. <laughs> yeah. He always looks forward to that. <laughs> I love that. And sometimes right. they have nipplies. <laughs> That's true. More of what you like. But uh, aside from finding the information in the newsletter, you might also get a special invitation uh, sent to you uh, if, I guess, you were prior art purchasers. <laughs> we always, uh, always, always right. get oh, right. these we, little handwritten invitations. Right. We get, we always Except get, last time. Shame on you, Park West. We get the uh, yeah, we get the special invitation card arrives in a lovely envelope, and I say, oh, what's this? <gasps> and it says, you're invited to a special event. <gasps> what could that be? Oh, it's an art auction. It's an art auction. They want more of our money, <laughs> right? Of course. Um, so there's various ways that you can be notified of the auction. Uh, and it's going to give you all the details of where it's going to be. A lot of times they're in like um, like lounges and no, disco. Right. I mean, I mean, you see the crew members empty out the entire area. Yeah. And you see, I mean, one one year we were our cabin was I I think located right next to the art vault. Yes, it was, and they were constantly moving right in and out, in and out. Trolleys and trolleys of artwork. Now I do want to say something um, about sometimes with these with these invitations. Some of the uh, the viewings and auctions are by invitation only. Right. Uh, so you may be walking by and want to bid on something. But um, it, in the case of this, it was a special invitation for people who have previously purchased art and it was only available for those uh, right. guests. Uh, so I just wanted to yeah. say that. 
Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Not to be snobby, but. <laughs> Um, and, and then along with um, the events they have, we, we would get notices about raffles. Oh, yeah. Because you can win, which we did win one year, yeah. where your, your, uh, your name uh, goes into a raffle. Uh, so we're going to be doing another video, and it's going to be about raffles and giveaways yeah. while you're cruising. Yeah. Because one of the things with these auctions, like Frank's mentioned, is uh, they have raffles. Yeah. And what they <laughs> do is every time you show up for your raffle, they'll show your bidding card, right. and, and we'll get to that in a minute. We'll take you through the process. Uh, you'll, you'll have a number, and you'll get a raffle ticket. <laughs> so if you go to every art auction, there's a possibility that you could have 10 entries. Right. Let's say I go to every one, okay? I could have 10 entries, and maybe Frank's only gone to one, so he'll only have one entries. So I have a better chance of winning than he would. Right. And we did win one year. We'll tell you about that. Yes, we but did. But let's, let's start to go through and take you through um, the process. Uh, because now you, you've seen it in your newsletter. You know it's on such and such a date at such and such a location in a lounge. And you show up at whatever time it is. Um, and they have a banquet table set up outside. And mm -hmm. you get in line. And you have to register. And so, you know, you And are, the registration process is, because uh, I usually do that, is they're going to need your name, mm -hmm. your address, a, a phone number if you choose to give it, an email address as well, uh, sales, and your, your sale and sign card. card. Now, that is very important. You always want to have that with you, but you need it here uh, because when you purchase art, it goes on your sale and sign account. That's right. And your cabin number. Absolutely. Because that's how, like liquor or a souvenir, that's how the artwork is purchased through your sale and sign uh, uh, account. Account, yeah. So, so then, once you sign up, they give you the magical card. <laughs> and this is your bidding card. Where, you know, like if you see on TV where people are bidding and they usually have the paddles. Right. You know, right. $30,000. Yeah. Or, or when people go, yeah, right. or, right. or what up? It's not like no, that. It's, not. it's this card, right. and be mindful with this yes. card because I've made the mistake. We didn't end up having to purchase anything because somebody <laughs> outbid us. But you know, you get excited and you're like, Ooh, oh, wow. Woo. <laughs> or you're going like this and fanning yourself because <laughs> no. it's warm and they're thinking that you're bidding. Yeah, they're thinking that 253 is bidding. And we're like, no, it's not. Put it in your lap. <laughs> Don't be waving it around. So you get this, and it's basically it. Uh, it talks about the rules and regulations, and uh, you know sales and return policies. It's it's very instructional. But right. this, this is your bidding number. And on this cruise, we were number two fifty three, and this is us throughout the whole cruise at every auction, our auction event we attended. Mm -hmm. um, so you, after you get your card, you, you pretty much walk in. Now I'm in the wheelchair, so Kevin is always scouting um, a, a route uh, that he can get me through, but he does reconnaissance first. It can be very congested. Yeah. So our disabled viewers, uh, my biggest suggestion to you is um, go to the art gallery where they're hung, where the art is hung uh, prior so that you can get an idea right. of what you like, what you don't like. And um, maybe take a pad or a piece of paper right. and a pen and just jot down the name of that artist. Then you can give it to one of the, um, right, one what, of the, what are the, they called? Like, I don't know. I, just, oh, I, I keep thinking docent, but I know it's uh, not a docent. Uh, like a curator, right. uh, and um, you can tell them, I like Thomas right. Kincaid, I like, uh, who do we like? Jean-Claude Picot, oh, we yeah, went there, Picot. we said, you know, we're looking for more Picot, so you go right up to them and said, you know, we're here at the auction, and, you know, it looks, you know, like what I see, but we're interested in um, Picot's, or I'm interested in more uh, Looney Tunes or cells. Kredansky, uh, or, you know, there's there's a plethora of artists. Yes. And they will actually bring those uh, pieces to you if you can't right. get to view them. Right. I know many times they've brought uh, Frank a piece that I saw, and he's either gone, or... 
<laughs> so, right. right. So, you know, don't be um, afraid or intimidated. Uh, no one is there forcing you to buy art. Right. So don't look at going to an art auction as, oh, well, I don't know and I don't know anything about that. You're never going to know until you go. Exactly. So go, go, attend an auction, get your free champagne, maybe some nibblies, walk around, <clears throat> look at all the artwork, learn about art, talk to the reps. Well, that brings us to another thing that they have. They well, have well, educational. Well, right, they do seminars. Uh, seminars on, on the on particular artists right. or on uh, buying art through an auction. Mm -hmm. I've seen, um, I've seen. Uh, uh, they had a Thomas Kincaid uh, seminar once. Uh, we're not into him, but. Yeah. Uh, you know. But I, but I've seen how to bed. That's what I was going to say. Is they have auctions on how to bed. What right. are smart bidding? Right. I mean, if they want you to strategies. attend the auctions and they want you to buy some artwork, it might. Again, I will use the word of the day. It behooves them to teach you. That was the word of the day the other day. I know. I had to use it again. Sorry. Um, but so walking around and familiarizing yourself with artwork and, and the artists who, who did the art and asking questions uh, is, is a great way to learn. Uh, you can also um, do a pre-bid. Okay, talk oh, about yeah. that because you can go and say, you know, that I'm interested in this in this painting. Uh, that's the artist I like, and I'm interested. Well, we 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 were on, I believe we were on the gem mm -hmm. the second yep. time around, and I had um, sought out uh, one of the workers that we became friendly with, right? And. Um, I, we were looking for a particular piece, right? And they they had it on the show, <laughs> and uh, so we knew what the opening bid was going to be. And um, this particular one was a CP lot. Now a CP lot means complete package. Right. Complete package is the artwork, the frame, and the glass. But CP lots always are carry-offs. Carry-offs mean that you have to take right. it with you when you leave the ship. Right. And we'll get into how you get the art right, later on. Right, ways. So anyways, we got a little slip like this, and this is a pre-bid slip. Right, and it was um, attached to our invitation. And it was attached to our invitation. So what we wrote down was uh, the lot number. Uh, they tell us the estimated retail price. And we, we came up with our pre-bid. Now, the pre-bid is usually the opening bid. Yeah. <laughs> so, um... What are the chances that someone else in that room, of all those people, want that picture? Correct. Though there is a story we're going to tell you later of uh, artwork that we purchased that I almost didn't get home with because somebody was going to sell it. <laughs> <laughs> so story <can> later <laughs> on. Also on the pre-bid voucher is uh, an area to write your bidding number. It's very important you get that number yes. correct because again, that's how they know who the piece of art goes right. to. And um, so we did that. Right. And then during the auction, because once you've pre-bid, unless somebody else pre-bid and they outbid you. Right. It's your piece. It's yours. It's yours. And uh, what they end up doing during the during the art auction is it'll eventually be brought out, put on an easel, and they would say, this piece was pre-bid on, um, and the lucky owners are 253. Congratulations. <laughs> and and everybody claps, claps and gets and excited and we drink more champagne and it's really great. So so that's 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 you get going because you you it's time to take your seats. Uh, the auctioneer is gonna get up there and he's kind of gonna he's gonna go through the the bidding process and the rules and the regulations and things like that. So I want everybody to be perfectly clear that when they go to an auction they are not bidding on what they see. Now, you know what I mean by that. Frank knows what I mean by that, but you guys out there might not. You are not bidding on the piece of art and the framing and the glass. You are only bidding on that piece of art. Now, there are caveats to that, and we're going to get to that, but usually most of the lots 
uh, will be just the artwork. Right. Now, for example, my friend Tweedy. Now, this is what started it all. 2001, I was on a Caribbean cruise. Kevin and I had, had met earlier, uh, but our vacations were already set in stone and paid for. So I went on my Caribbean cruise with my friends. And I went to Italy. And he went to Italy with his friends because it was all set. And so at an art auction, I, I got interested in the Looney Tune South. Now, there are different types right. of art, um, and we really can't get into that in this particular um, video about all the different right. ones. Right. But this particular one, is this, a, this is an etching? Yes. And this is an etching, which means that it is a cell. It is one piece, one little tiny um, uh, piece of a cartoon that was drawn and then hand pencil paint um, colored in by the artist. Right. It's numbered. No one, yes, do, it do is. Do you know what number it is? It is. Oh, I can't read it. I can't so read small. it. It's so small. You're gonna have my glasses on. Anyways, they're they're all numbered. Now, uh, different pieces. I think it's uh, I think it's seventeen. It's number 17 of 2,500. Uh, and so the lower the number, the piece, the higher the quality of the piece. So this being 17, it's you know one of the first ones they did. Right. Um, and, and the more pieces that are done, the plate gets degraded more and more. Uh, now, there are different levels, too, of, of there's etchings and drawings and paintings right. and embellished posters right and that's all going to uh, factor into the cost right and again the auctioneer will say i have a lithograph blah 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 blah. i have an etching i have a this i they'll tell you what it is and they'll explain the differences and that's why we encourage you to right. go to some of those yes. educational seminars really is learning if you're planning right. on purchasing some art or even going to an art auction because then you'll know what he's talking right. about so once the purchase was made mm -hmm. uh you make an appointment uh with one of the reps and you go down and you pick out a frame mm -hmm. okay and they take you through all the different types of frames and i picked this one because it was very substantial and it really looked nice against the small little uh, Tweety, uh, and Tweety has an attitude um, on his face, and I love it. Tweety with an attitude, <laughs> which is why I bought it for Kevin. So once you do that, you sit down, you pick it out. Um, it takes about 12 plus weeks for uh, it to be processed, for them to do the framing. So you're not taking this no, home, okay? You're taking a bill, an invoice home with you. Right. But he picked out, okay, obviously he bid on the Tweety, and then he selected the matting. Right. And he selected the framing, and he selected the size of the framing, and how he wanted it. Did he want it right. square? Did he want it uh, elongated? Yeah. Does he want it horizontal or does he right. want it vertical? So there's a there's a lot you get to choose. Right. But they'll show you because they have their computer. Right. And they have a lot of the actual framing uh, wood mounted on the wall. You can actually see it. Do you remember there was a Rembrandt? We saw this Rembrandt and we thought it was the most ris ridiculous <laughs> thing. It was this little tiny one oh. by one by one. Oh my God, it was this big. And it was framed in like... I don't know. It was framed in like a, a four foot by was, four foot matted, matted, like, matted, matted, what's, matted. What's that spot on that thing? Yeah. It was, so, a, it was this big. So my point is, is when you see them bring them out on the, uh, on the, um, on the easel. easel, don't be swayed by, by the, frame the framing. Don't be spray, swayed how it's matted because right. you get to choose all that. Right. So that's this. So that uh, so that process, and I went home uh, with a with an invoice and a bill, and I waited and waited and waited. And I think that took like twenty. It took 20 weeks. And it, and right. They say twelve weeks, but it took a long time. But it was shipped right to the house, mm -hmm. right to the house. And so that was a gift for Kevin. So that's what started the whole thing. Now we've also purchased artwork where it is not framed. At Correct. All. And, and actually... Um, and you can save a lot of money by yes. doing that. Yes. So 
just because it's framed on the easel, mm -hmm. that's not, like I said, you're only getting the artwork. Right. So we opted the one time to uh, just receive the artwork. Right. And how did that come? They sh they, it's rolled up and it's shipped in a, in a shipping tube, like, like, uh, like architect drawings, mm -hmm. you know, rolled up. And, uh, and again, it took several weeks. It took several weeks, but it didn't take as long yeah. uh, as, um, as when they frame it. Yeah, because the framing process is for you and everybody else on your ship and everybody else on the, all the other cruise lines. Right, but they are actually, Park West is one of the largest in the world for framing. Yeah. Um, they do an excellent job. That being said, yes, yes. we have our favorite person that we go see at our local Michaels. Yeah, right. Uh, which is kind of like a craft store, but they do custom framing. And uh, that's where we choose if we get pieces that are unframed, that's where we get them like framed. Ship them in a tube, we'll frame it ourselves. So if you have a framing place, a framing guy, or whatever, do it at home. And then you have the takeoff, the complete package takeoff, which is. You know, it's basically as is. It's as is, and you know, our takeoff had a little tiny bit of damage right. to the frame, but we got such a good deal on right. it that we said, eh, eventually we'll get it reframed. We actually haven't got it reframed yet right. because but what they people do don't is notice. But they wrap it up for you. Mm -hmm. It's they, all wrapped it's up. It's a uh, uh, bubble wrapped and then brown papered, tied up, and I had it on my lap. Uh, with my tote bag on the way home and it came on the plane and yeah I mean obviously we could do that because it wasn't because it was small it was smallish like that but if you're talking a giant piece um, no. unless you live in the port that you <laughs> well I've met off I've in. met people on the cruise ship that have bought takeoff pieces that were very large and what they end up doing is they get off the ship they go to a UPS or a Federal Express they have it packaged. It's already wrapped up really well, well but yeah. they have it, you know, packaged, boxed, and then they ship it home. And it's there when they get home. Right. So that's also an option. So, yeah, so that's that's the process. Now let's talk about uh, the deals they have, because there's some, oh, yeah. There are deals to be had. Right, like they'll come out and they'll have a group deal. Like them creepy ladies. Those I don't know what they are, but they're these faceless yes, women. We're not into the faceless ladies. There's only one I like. And uh, Yeah, and uh, yeah, because we look at the colors. We look at the colors. We look, Sometimes we look at the subject matter. Right. Um, uh, anyways, they, they'll come out with groupings, right. and they'll say, this is a special lot. There are five pieces in this lot and they, right. they absolutely love to do this with Peter Max things. Yeah. Uh, Frank and I are not big we Peter Max not fans. Peter Max, no thank you. I think they push it way too yes. much. Um, sorry. Sorry if you like Peter Max. Uh, but um, they'll come out and they'll say this is a grouping. Normally retail these things separately would be X. You know, right. like ten thousand right. dollars, and uh, we're gonna start the bidding at such and such for the whole group of five. For the whole grouping, right. and a lot of times they do that with pieces that they have multiple sets of. Right. Uh, so they might have six sets of these five paintings uh, or uh, lithographs. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, they will auction them off, and the top six bidders will get those groupings. Right. So you have to listen to the auctioneer, right. pay attention. Um, but they also do really cool things too, <laughs> I think it's which, crazy. which I'll tell a little story about. They have these uh, these things called mystery deals, yes. <laughs> and um, they actually come with the paintings, and they they put them on the easels. But they put them backwards, so you can't see what. So the, nobody sees what you, they you are. You don't see what the painting is. You have no idea other than seeing the back of the painting. Right. Well, that's now, all you're looking at. Now, on this particular cruise, the the auctioneer explained it. I understood it, but I don't think anybody else understood it because what they do is they say, if you want to bid on this. Uh, if you want to bid on this, you have to throw up your card, okay? You're not obligated right. to uh, bid on 
the right. products if you don't like them. Yeah, I mean, you don't. But, you're not forced to buy them. But in order to get into the auction, right. you have to show them that you have the possibility of bidding. Right. So and if funny. you didn't throw up your card, you couldn't bid on it. Right. So it's funny that mostly everybody in the room is like, yeah. Well, not on this cruise. <laughs> on, that, on that cruise, uh, when, when we won our, and, it, and ours was a mystery group deal. Yes, it was a group deal. Uh, and so he said to throw, if you want to bid on this, you got to throw up your card. And I'm like, woo! Sure. And everybody else is like, Looking at everybody, like, looking at each like, other. Well, what are you doing? Why would you bid on something you haven't seen? Remember? And then he's like, okay, let me explain yes. this again. Yes. So then finally, people were throwing yeah. up their cards. And uh, then they, they turned, turned them around. And they were the three paintings we have in our living room. They're, they were Linda LeKempf's. Right. Um, they were uh, a lithographs that were hand embellished. Um, which are valued a little bit more, and we got a great deal yeah. on them. And uh, we had those ones sent right. to us, unframed, uh, save us a little money because right. we also bought way too much on that cruise. And um, plus, they didn't really have what kind of frame we wanted. Right. And, uh, we, and we wanted to take the time. We had, you know, yeah. bad enough we spent the money on the art, but... We'll, we'll, we'll wait a bit on the framing until we can afford it. Right. So, um, so that's a little bit about that. So, um, but remember, when you buy the art, um, be prepared because you know you're paying, obviously, for the framing and the matting. But there's um, a, a lot of other little hidden fees yeah. in there so be prepared there's additional things like sales tax right. and shipping and handling uh insurance charges because uh park west isn't gonna send you a thousand dollar piece of art and then have you say well it never showed up right. so or if it's damaged right. uh there's also appraisal That's fees exactly. which you don't have right. to have. But you get an appraisal and a certificate of authenticity. And we always suggest you do yes. that. The last time I think it was like $35 yeah. each for each piece of art, but it's valuable for you to have because you will have the proof for your insurance company right. too uh, for years to come. And uh, appraisal fees uh, or appraisals can also be gotten after the fact. Because I right. know Frank didn't get an appraisal on Tweety, but years later, well, I, was I a ordered new, one. I was a newbie. Yeah, that was your first auction. <laughs> it was my first auction. Um, they uh, also they have a uh, Park West has a return policy which they have upgraded uh, that you're able to the four 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 I think it is the 40, yeah. 40, 40, 40 because yes. they're forty years in the business. Um, uh, you have. 40 days to return or exchange right. the piece within 40 months. Right. So, so total returns in 40 days, but after that, you can only exchange it for right. another piece of art within 40 months. Now we want you to keep in mind, right. we want you to keep in mind that 40 days return policy you are not going to be getting back your shipping fees, no, no. your appraisal fee, or your tax. Right. Well, I think you might get your taxes back. The, the ship has sailed on all of that. But, you know, all the fees that are on there, you're not right. getting them back. So we encourage you to instead look for something else that you might want right. to exchange it for. And 40 months is a long time right. to exchange. Uh, it, it really is. You know, it's really a value. It's over three years. I know. So, you know, we could upgrade some of our paintings <laughs> if you want. <laughs> Another rotation in the house <laughs> by return exchange. But uh, And now we have just a couple of uh, uh, Q&As uh, about the art world and art auctions and what, you know, common questions uh, are asked. Uh, that you might ask. Like, I don't know anything about art and I've never attended an onboard auction. What is your advice? Well, if you ask me that question, my advice would be don't buy anything unless you like it. Oh, uh, no. We say love it. Right? You gotta you, love it. You gotta love it. Yeah. And 
Don't think that you're going to be buying this art to make money on it. Right. That is the worst yeah, thing to art do. Art as an in investment in the future of your retirement. The type of art that you would be purchasing, most people would be purchasing on okay. a cruise, yeah. would not be no. to make money on it. Right. Uh, those would be pieces that are like in the 20s, 30s, 40s, $50,000 range, uh, which we've seen. Which, yes, in fact, I think it was my second cruise way back. Uh, it was a gentleman, and we were in the auction, and he was on his cell phone taking orders for his from, gallery. from his gallery. And he was, I think he bought like uh, seventy fifty to $75,000 worth of artwork, and we were all like, holy crap. And you will see a variety of artwork right. on most of these cruise ships. Uh, they range, you know, anywhere from $150 for a piece of art. All the way, I think, I think on our last sailing, uh, no, the sailing before last, because we didn't go to the art auction when we were with Dave and Darlene on the Jade. Uh, they had the highest piece, and it sold, was $78,000. Right. And I think it was that stupid little Rembrandt thing. Yeah. Now, the... Uh, <laughs> I shouldn't say that. Congratulations to the person who bought it. Yes. Congratulations for having $78,000 to throw away on but, a piece uh, of art. Park West determines what art will be on your particular ship based on the demographics of the guests that are sailing. Mm -hmm. And that's how they target the artwork. Um, but basically, you know, look and buy what appeals to you, what appeals to your eye. It's not about the, okay, well, yeah, it is about the price, but don't think, oh, well, I should be buying Thomas Kincaid because I hear he's a famous. Do you like Thomas Kincaid? Well, we don't. So we would never buy a Thomas Kincaid. Right. We would never buy a Peter Max. And another piece Buy of what you like, what you see. Another piece of advice would be that uh, these pieces of art are not all originals. Right. That's the biggest mistake people right. make is they think that right. it's an original piece of art. The original one is the original piece of art that they make copies of. Right. It could be a cellograph, it could right. be a lithograph, it could be a poster, it could be a hand embellished canvas. Right. Um, and again, you need to go to those seminars to find out what those are. Right. So it's, you know, there's a lot of factors. Don't be intimidated. Don't feel like, you know, well, I'm just so ignorant about art. What do I know? Mm -hmm. You're just like everybody else. That's right. Buy what you love. And that's the key. That's Do the key. we love it? We're like, yeah, I like it. Oh, don't say that because you're like, yeah, I like it. No, <laughs> no. If we're forking over the car to buy it, we had better love it. It's going to be hanging in our house. Um, what art mediums will passengers see on board uh, cruise line ships? Um, they, ha they have, again, we talked about the different, uh, the lithographs. Oh, we bought a, a Brito sculpture. Oh yes, they have sculptures. Because they actually have sculpture from an artist, Brito. Mm -hmm. And it's a cat. It's a cat, it's so cute. Yes. Um, and that was a numbered piece. Yes. Again, the original art, uh, the original sculpture um, was done in uh, a porcelain. Mm -hmm. And then what we could afford Right? right, because there's no way we could afford the original. I mean, you're talking tens of thousands I know. of dollars. Picasso, Van Gogh. <laughs> but we no. got the the resin sculpture, and it is a limited edition numbered piece. I think we have number thirteen or fourteen out of eighteen hundred, and um, it has increased in value since we purchased it. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, uh, and let's see, where can cruisers find out more about artists Park West Galleries represent? Well, you know, Park West Galleries, they have their website. They have their website. It's uh, www.parkwestgallery.com. Right. I have spent many an yes. hour reading about the artists, right. um, which brings me to something. It reminds me of what you get when you... Uh, have won or purchased a piece of art, you usually will get a pamphlet about the artist. Right. It will explain where they came from, their age, their whole career, their whole career, um, where their uh, 
art pieces can be seen in galleries right. and such. So if you pick a cruise and uh, you know you say, oh, I'm, I just booked a cruise on, on uh, Royal Caribbean and I'm going whatever, you know, do a little homework at home. Yep, that's what we did the last yes. time, um, a few times ago actually. Go to the Park West Gallery website. And we picked an artist and we said, we are going to ask them about yes. Devaw yes. because uh, Devaw is very similar to um, uh, Picot. Uh, Devaw actually learned from Picot and his the arts are very similar, the techniques. Right. and. We didn't find anything, mm -hmm. but we knew the name, we right. knew the history, and... We sounded a little educated. It, it helps we a little bit. We did our bit. homework, yeah. It helps a little bit if you do your little research I before. Think, I think you'll get a little bit more out of the reps there, the Parkless mm -hmm. reps, if you come across as serious and kind of know what you're talking about when you're asking questions. Um, as opposed to, you know, going to the gallery going, Hey, ah, ah, that looks like a nice piece. I wonder how much that costs. Give me I mean, that one. Uh, Can I make some money on is it? Is that expensive? Uh, I mean, who's going to take you seriously? They're not. Um, so do some homework and educate yourself, uh, just like you do anything else. Now, Kevin's going to tell you the story about how one of our art purchases almost didn't come home with us. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. I can't turn my back for five seconds. He's selling practically the clothes off my back. So we had gone on the NCL Gem in 2015. Uh, oh, and yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, well, I'm looking yeah. on the back because on the back of your um, artwork, right. if you do decide to get it framed and matted and all that stuff, they'll put a little sticker on the back and it'll have the date that you purchased it what ship you were on, our phone numbers, addresses, right. all that stuff. And uh, we had um, decided that we were going to purchase a Paco right. uh, if we found something that we liked. Right. And Frank saw this piece. Right. Now, this is very unusual for us. We got a very, very good deal on this uh, piece. We don't have too many that are actual paintings on canvas. This is an actual right. painting on canvas. This is an original. Right. It spoke to me. It, it spoke to Frank. Uh, we ended up getting a really good deal on it because we. this was the cruise where we went wild and we bought a whole bunch of stuff. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Any, Sorry, Mom. <laughs> anyways, um, what I came to find out was that this particular art piece, uh, there was three in the series. Mm -hmm. Three. So, out of the series, there were only three pieces out there that were on canvas. The other ones were um, lithographs and um, were, you know, they were nice, they were numbered, but this is like, I wish it, the, the camera isn't probably doing this justice. This looks like it's from a museum. So, later on in the cruise, I was approached by a woman. He was accosted by some potential thief. She was very <laughs> upset because <laughs> they had gone on this particular cruise. I don't know how they found out that this piece of art was on that ship, but they were avid cruisers. So I'm very sorry if you're watching this. Uh, We've got it. It's ours. We still have it. Call me if you want to make a deal. <laughs> But uh, she offered us, um, she offered me a few hundred dollars more than what we paid. Right. She wanted to add this because she had the other piece. She had the other two. Two pieces. She had the other she two. She wanted to finish the three-piece collection, and we had the third piece she wanted. Now, uh, so I think it was day three she offered me a couple hundred bucks more. Then she offered me even more, and, and Frank is... Saying, no, it is no. mine. So That's if you want to contact me, no. and you know, Hibby's like, you oh, got a number. You know, if you make me an offer, I can't refuse. This this painting is history. We'll See find ya. another one. And I'm like, you're not selling my painting. So this is the piece that almost didn't come home yes. with us. <laughs> she didn't get it. Uh, oh well. The deal maker here. Um, anyways, so. We hope that you've learned a lot today 
Uh, we were glad that we could bring you through the process of uh, attending an art auction and maybe on your next cruise you'll think about going to one. Yeah, we hope that we made it a little bit more comfortable for you. A little you. less scary, a little less a little intimidating. Less scary. And really, if we can do it, you can do it. That's right. No one is forcing you to buy anything. Just make sure you love it. That's right. And until next time, we want to remind you that we are on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and Snapchat. Snapchat. So make sure that you click that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. And we want you to travel safe. And cruise often. Bye. Tweety says bye-bye. <laughs>